What's up, Star Wars nerds, and welcome to another episode of Brett on Fett. On today's episode, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on just some of the reveals from this weekend's Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. Then I'll be taking a moment to flex a little on a successful prediction I made. I'll explain later. And finally, I'll be doing another installment of my series I like to call Droid Service. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the channel. This is episode 21 of Brett on Fett. Thanks for joining me. And you know, it's been a real exciting week for Star Wars fans. It began on Wednesday where Hasbro had their Obi-Wan Wednesdays, where they're revealing products from the brand new series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. But then on Thursday, the real fun began with the start of the Star Wars celebration in Anaheim, the biggest Star Wars convention around. And with that, there's been tons of exciting news and trailers and a lot of product reveals. And if you want a full recap of all the Hasbro reveals, I strongly suggest checking out videos by YouTubers uh, Boss Bounty and Usual Mike. But as usual, I do want to give you guys my quick thoughts on some of the reveals from the event. So let's take a look. Okay, so like I was saying, I'm not going to cover every single item that Hasbro revealed, but I do want to cover a number of them. And I'm going to start with the Black Series. And actually, one of the first reveals from Wednesday we got was Reva, aka the third sister. Um, she looks pretty awesome. The likeness is, is very good uh, with respect to the actress. Uh, really like her outfit. And it's got cloth goods on her cape. Um, and then followed by the Grand Inquisitor, again, real good looking figure. The likeness on the head is awesome. Um, I think they just hit it out of the park with this one. Then the fifth brother, another great looking figure, another very good likeness to the actual character on the show. And then finally, they revealed the fourth sister. Now this one seems a little bit like a digital rendering. I think it is a digital rendered uh, photograph, um, but I can tell it's still going to look awesome. They didn't show a picture of the packaging for some reason. I think it, I think that one's just a little bit further behind, but all in all, excellent looking Inquisitors for the Black Series. One of my favorite vintage collection figures is the Season 7 version of Darth Maul, and I'm really excited that you Black Series fans are now getting that figure. And he doesn't disappoint. Uh, he looks awesome. He looks just as good, if not better, than the Vintage Collection version of Maul. Uh, it's just really awesome with those uh, robotic legs. Um, and excellent head sculpt. Uh, paint apps look great. It just looks like a fantastic figure. Okay, this one really caught me off guard. This is a Macquarie Concept 2-pack of the Obi-Wan and Darth Vader from A New Hope. Uh, this was just a strange reveal. So, you know, here's a look at the concept Obi-Wan. Here's a look at the concept Vader. And if you guys have followed my channel, you know I love the concept art of Ralph McQuarrie. And I did a whole episode on it. And I just would have rather they used this Luke Skywalker from that famous duel uh, from that McQuarrie art. Um, rather than using the concept Obi-Wan that they did. I understand why they did it because they're kind of recreating the famous duel that Obi-Wan and Vader had. But as far as I know, Macquarie never used that particular concept for Obi-Wan uh, in a duel with Vader in any of his sketches. So this one here is much more famous. So this one would have made more sense to, to do for this two pack. All right, so next up, I want to quickly go through some of the vintage collection reveals, starting with the third sister again, Reva from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, she's a spitting image of the Black Series version, so it looks awesome. Next up, also from the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series, is the man himself, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the wandering Jedi version of him. Uh, epic looking card back. Uh, for some reason, when I first saw it, I thought it looked a little off, uh, but 
Uh, it's grown on me, and I think it's really awesome. And the figure uh, looks really good too, so uh, great figure, looking forward to getting. This is another reveal that I did not see coming at all. It's a Gaming Greats 3-pack of figures from the new game Jedi Survivor, which is a sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. Um, uh, starting with the Riot Scout Trooper with his Electro Staff. And then my favorite of the three, you got a Magna Guard. That, he looks really cool. Um, and then lastly, you got a KX Security Joy with Electro Staff. Pretty cool figures. Uh, I've seen some photos. The card backs look really good, and it's going to be in one of those three-pack boxes, uh, similar to the Skiff Guard three-pack and the um, recent Bad Batch four-pack. So I'm looking forward to that one. One of my favorite reveals of the event was this droid R2 SHW. He is the sidekick droid of the pilot Antok Merrick, who was exclusively released with that X-Wing from Rogue One, but we never got the droid, so we finally are getting the droid. Yes, it's just another repaint of R2-D2, but it's a very cool repaint, and it's a great R2 with all the, uh, you know, his sensor scope and his, you know, panels that open up. And, you know, here's a picture of the X-Wing we never got. So so that's awesome that they're finally giving us that. It's long overdue. And it's going to be its own individually carded figure, which I love because I love droids. And lastly, for the TVC official reveals, we finally got a look at the upcoming Dark Trooper figure. Unfortunately, I knew this was going to happen, but it's been designated as a deluxe figure because of its size and accessories. And so therefore, it's coming in a closed deluxe style box like they've given to us with a few other figures before which means no window no bubble and so there's really no point in displaying this mint on card but it truly is an amazing looking action figure and so you know i'm gonna have to order this one and i will be taking it out of the box uh, it does come with an awesome accessory with its charging station and it, you know, it's just a great looking figure. I'm heartbroken that I can't get this on a traditional card back. I will not be collecting these deluxe boxed figures, um, but I do have to make an exception for the truly exceptional figures like this one. So I will be getting this one. And finally, they revealed yet another retro uh, prototype figure. This one being Luke Skywalker in his snow speeder gear. Um, you may recall the last one they revealed was Chewbacca and with, with that one and this one, you know, I'm just not as excited as I was for the first three figures that came out with this series. That being said, I still very much love these iridescent card backs and the artwork on the card backs, so I will be getting this. I will keep buying these retro prototype figures for as long as they keep putting them out, but I am starting to lose a little bit of excitement for the line due to the figure choices they've been making lately. All right, so that's my thoughts on some of the official reveals from Hasbro at the event. But in addition to those official reveals, they had at least one unofficial reveal when they put on display for the first time the brand new card back for the new Din Djarin Morak figure. Now back in February, they announced that figure, but they never revealed what the card back would look like. And on February 10th, I put out my episode 5 where I did a whole segment on what I was predicting that card back to look like. Uh, let's take a look at the clip from that episode. And whenever they reveal a new figure like this, I always like to speculate on what the card back might look like, like the image and everything. And I really think with this release, we're going to finally get a version of Din Djarin with his helmet off, where we actually see the actor Pedro Pascal's face. And so I brushed up on my very amateurish Photoshop skills and put together an image of what I think this card back may look like and this is what I came up with for the card back uh, I think this is a, a pretty good Shot of him standing straight up facing towards the camera Decent lighting so I think this is a good chance that this might be the image or very close to what we might see for this figure Okay, so I was fortunate enough to know somebody who's a fellow member of the discord chat I belong to who was at the convention and he was able to snap some awesome shots for me of that new Din Djarin Morak figure and take a look at it. Here it is. And you, as you can see, it is almost identical to the Photoshop version I predicted back in early February. Um, you know, it's almost a little suspicious if you ask me. I mean, come on Hasbro, 
think you might owe me a little something for that one. Um, I think the only difference is Hasbro went with a little more zoomed in of that image, but it's basically the exact same image, same angle, same lighting. You know, it's just almost the same. So I just had to flex a little bit, give myself a pat on the back for getting that one right. I don't get a whole lot of the things right all the time, so I'm going to soak this one up a little bit. Anyways, I just thought that was kind of cool that, you know, Hasbro's listening to me. That's just how I'm going to see it. All right, so a couple of episodes ago, I started a brand new segment for my channel that I like to call Droid Service, where I spotlight random droids, figures, and collectibles. And this week, I want to do something a little bit different with Droid Service. Instead of covering figures, I want to cover some remote control droids made by Sphero. And believe it or not, these things, you may remember them because they weren't out that long ago, but actually it was kind of long ago because the first one of these was put out nearly seven years ago. And the last one they put out was nearly five years ago. It's actually been that long. So anyways, you've probably seen these before, but I just want to revisit them because they're so cool. So let's take a look at the Sphero Star Wars droids. Okay, so I have three of the four droids that Sphero put out. We've got BB-8, R2-D2, and R2-Q5. The fourth Sphero droid I do not own is the BB-9E, which is like the black colored uh, first order version of BB-8. BB-8 was the first one that was released in uh, 2015. And the packaging on BB was really nice. It's real high quality material. They've got nice artwork all the way around. A little flap door here. Uh, I've already taken BB out, of course. Um, but really nice packaging on this one. Um, and then you had the R2-D2 came out a couple of years later in 2017. Um, they skimped a little bit on the packaging with R the, both of the R2 units. Uh, just kind of has a sleeve and then a plain black box. Uh, to keep them in. Yeah, it's just a much simpler design. It's not quite as nice as the packaging they went with with BB-8. And I'll just show you real quick with the R2-Q5. It's the exact same type of packaging. It's just got that outer sleeve and then just a plain black, uh, plain black box on the inside as well. So just wanted to show you guys the packaging before we get into the actual droids. All right, so I'm starting with BB-8. I've got him on his little charging stand. You can still use him on that stand just to talk to him. Um, unfortunately with the BB-8, he doesn't have an internal speaker like the others do I'm gonna show you later. So his noises have to be played through your phone or tablet. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Uh, but he's super cute. He does a lot of cute things. Um, he is a little bit hard to control with the uh, tablet controls. Um, it's especially hard to handle him on a small glass table like I'm trying to do here. Um, he can easily uh, roll off because he can pick up speed uh, pretty quick when you get him going. And so you see here, I'm like trying to stop him real quick. Um, but it's a it's real neat technology that came out back then. Uh, it was kind of all the rage when this guy came out. And I still think he's pretty neat. Um, but after a while, it does get a little boring. And I think it hurts it a lot that he doesn't have his own internal speaker. So he's actually my least favorite of the three droids. Next up is probably my favorite, uh, just because he's such a classic character, R2-D2. And Spiro really nailed the feel for R2 with this. Um, his ma different mannerisms he can do, uh, the way his, he moves, um, his... You know, his third leg that comes out for when he's ready to, to roll around. Uh, I, I like the way it's deployed and everything. And it's just a lot of fun. It can be hard to uh, control him on a glass table. It's a little bit slick for him, I think. And sometimes it's harder to keep control. Um, but I've had no problem with him like on a wood floor, tile floor. Or even carpet, he does he does fairly well on carpet actually. Um, but I just love the mannerisms and the different things you can do with him. Uh, for example, you can reenact him getting electrocuted and shutting down, like when the Jawas shoot him in A New Hope. I'll demonstrate here. <laughs> it's just so awesome. 
And un unlike the BB-8, all the sound comes directly from R2. He has his own internal speaker, which is awesome. You can see he was kind of crying for me to pick him up. But anyways, I think they hit this one out of the park. I love this R2-D2. And then lastly is R2-Q5. He's an astromech from Return of the Jedi. I think he was on the Death Star. And you may think it's just the exact same thing as the R2-D2 I showed you, but they really did an awesome job of giving this guy a totally different personality and totally different variety of sounds and actions. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed this one. I got this one as a gift. I never would have bought it thinking it was going to be just too much like R2, but after I got this as a gift, I, I really loved him. Um, I like his color scheme, but I just love the sounds he makes. It's very unique. It's not at all like R2. Um, you can kind of see when I'm driving around the glass table, he kind of wobbles. He does not do that on a regular surface, like wood or tile. He only seems to do that on this slick glass. And like that fall down function that R2 has, this guy has the same thing, but it's a little bit different how he malfunctions. It's so awesome. Check this out. Yeah, the poor guy, he just totally melts down. So in addition to being able to control how these droids move and act using your phone or tablet, one of my favorite features of the Sphero droids is if you have multiple of them and you put them together, you can put them in conversation mode and these guys will actually have uh, conversations and interact with each other. Check this out. Alright, so that's going to do it for this episode. Let me know in the comments if you are lucky enough to be at Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim this year. I would love to hear from you about that. Also, let me know if you own any of the Sphero droids and what you think about them. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to all my subscribers. Please remember you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Take care and we'll see you next time.